with the passing away of Peter C. Newman, I thought I'd revisit one of his books I've read. This is on the United Empire Loyalists who moved to Canada after the American Revolution and, at least according to Newman, essentially created English-speaking Canada. This is very much old-style history in the sense that where most modern history is chock full of lots of sources. You try to avoid grand sweeping statements, that sort of thing. This has a lot of that. Uh, Newman actually tells us that without the United Empire Loyalists, you wouldn't have municipal government in Canada. Yeah, really, which seems rather dicey for various reasons. Um, that being said, Newman could actually write some of his passages, particularly where he's talking about the wilderness of Canada and how it was claimed, if you will, by the United Empire Loyalists, is rather poetic. The biggest problem as a modern reader of history, I found, is that there isn't much here as far as sourcing. We do follow a couple of individuals there's the occasional anecdote, but so much of the book is Newman's writing. He clearly has a axe to grind with the U.S. The creation of a Canadian uh, national myth is very important to him. You see this in his other works. It all gets a bit much in places. Uh, I like my histories a little more balanced, if you will. That being said, this does give a very interesting account of the American Revolution from a Tory perspective. It gets into some of the nastier bits, things that were done to the Tories before they were sent out, including, yes, tarring and feathering, which, let's face it, most histories written in the U.S. tend to gloss over or ignore. Uh, it also gets into the whole question of settlement in the Maritimes, Nova Scotia, uh, New Brunswick, and in what would become Ontario. The book concludes with, not surprisingly, the War of 1812, which Newman admits was a rather foolish conflict on both sides, but further argues that it essentially created, again, English-speaking Canada, and what would lead to sort of the the English, uh, well, the family compact, that sort of thing. It's fine as far as it goes. The, the conclusion is following the one family sort of through Confederation and into the First World War, actually. It's very tightly focused in that sense. I would have liked a little more. If you're going to go expansive, then go expansive. Um, I like the writing. I kind of want to see another history of this that's more modern. Uh, there's very little here in the First Nations, for instance, although he does point out that they were basically tossed aside by the British administration after the War of 1812. Uh, there isn't much here about different waves of um, immigrants and how that would change Canada. It's... I, I like it. It'll go on my like list. Uh, looking at this, I read it last about five years ago. That seems about right. I'll probably revisit it then. Newman was a proud Canadian and immigrant to Canada. Uh, that comes through strongly here. It does make me want to dig into some more of his writings. I think I have read other things by him over the years, but uh, this was the only one I had on the Kindle. So that's why I picked it up.